Good day, it's Tony Fortunato from the Technology Firm. We're going to, well I'm going to start a kind of something a little different. It's a uh, series of videos. It's a real job I'm working on with a real network. So I'm uh, going to walk you through as I'm going through this whole process, any um, experiences I can share, any tips, any tricks, any problems I encounter and all that sort of thing. Um, so let's just jump right into it. So here's a real network, real network. The only thing I've changed, obviously, is the uh, pot, the public IP and private IP addresses to kind of protect the network, that sort of thing, because that's not too important. And the job's actually quite straightforward. We've got this production router here on the bottom. It's being used. It's, there it is. And we've got this new router that's just been installed. And uh, the router's working. The circuit's working. Uh, and I know because I installed it. <laughs> and afterwards, uh, the customer looked at me and said, well, um, you know, since you did such a great job with that, can you help us kind of look at the network? And it's an ISP, and they've got a lot of customers, hundreds of customers, and they come across various different ways. They've got some wireless, fixed wireless, which is 900 megahertz, 2.4 gig. And they've got the cable customers as well. And this network's kind of just been evolving by itself over the years. I'm sure you've got the similar type of networks. But nobody's ever gone back and just kind of looked at it to see if there's anything we can do with it to make it a little better, you know, more reliable, easier to manage, all that kind of stuff. So what I did was, um, and I'm going to walk you through everything. Since this router's been, it's already been installed, it kind of saves me a lot of the pre-installation questions I usually go for. And, and here we go. So the pre-installation question. So if the equipment had not, was not already installed, then you need to cover the following points. Things like space for the equipment, power, heating, air conditioning requirements, patch cables, appropriate lengths. That's always important. You don't want to start doing those RJ45 female, female gizmos. Crossover versus straight through labels for cables and equipment that's huge uh, miscellaneous screws nuts bolts mounting brackets for the equipment naming convention that's another big very important point as well as IP addressing and this part I always find it's typically lacking or people overlook it test script for equipment installation and monitoring very important monitoring Maintenance window details, duration, you know, how much time have we got, what's the backup plan, that sort of thing. So all of these kind of go away because guess what, it's already in, it's already running, that sort of thing. So now we go on to the, the basic analysis interview with the customer and as I do that I start labeling ports and I label these ports two ways. Uh, the first way I label them is from whatever information the customer gives me and the second way is I manually either physically go to the switch and trace out the cables or you can just remote into the switch and figure that out. So in this case I did some remote stuff because it is quite far from me and I'm sure you run into this all the time. I have provided a link on a video on how I track down who's on what port on a Cisco switch when you need to do it manually. I know there's all sorts of apps that'll do that, that's fine. And then from there we get this uh, lovely little switch inventory, this is what the customer provided. And as we go through this we find all sorts of things may not be accurate because things have moved over time and that sort of thing. This specific customer told me his switch had been swapped out at one point. So that's a big red flag, you know, where the ports maintained the same order from the same connections. And this is all in one VLAN, so even if they mess it up it's still going to work. But moving forward we should be a little more accurate. The last thing I do is I actually draw this um, projected view of the network, you know, the proposed network, how's this thing going to look when we're done. And it doesn't change too much, but what I did was I made notes on all sorts of things that are going to change. So, you know, down here we've got the cable network and this is called the CMTS. We have to add a default route for the new network. There's a new VLAN for the routers that's not just on the same VLAN with all the other equipment. Um, and then you start justifying why, you know, what's the big deal, what's that going to buy me, so better security, scalability, performance, monitoring, that sort of thing. Um, you're going to turn routing on in this switch, it used to just be a DHCP server, that sort of thing. So as we do that, as well as move things around to new port numbers, people can visualize what kind of the goal is. So the next video, I'm actually going to start doing some changes and I'm going to walk you through what we're changing and if I have any problems and how we work around it and the testing methodology behind that. So I hope that helps and uh, if you have any suggestions by all means uh, just provide your feedback. It's, it's a live network. I'd love to learn some stuff from you folks. Have a good day. Bye for now.